Today we're going to make a super rich and creamy lasagna that's got all the right textures in all the right places. First thing that I'm actually chopping is not really a traditional thing to have in lasagna, but it's some mushrooms and I think they actually give like a really nice bit of texture, but if you're not a mushroom fan, then obviously just leave these out and go for a more traditional recipe. I like to not really waste stuff if I can help it. So I use the bottoms of the mushrooms as well and just kind of cut them up into little chunks like this and that's all good. All right, so yeah, mushrooms, I want them into like little bits like this. So I'll just slice them and then go like that. So they're nice little chunks. All right, mushrooms all done. We'll stick them to the side. Next off, we're gonna grab ourselves some garlic and we're chopping these next because they're gonna go in with the mushrooms at the same time. So, I don't know why I'm peeling it. Um, just need to take off the end and give it a crush because we just need it to be minced. So take off the skin and just give it a good old mince in. Cool, that'll do. Just roughly chopped like that. Now some celery. And the way I do it into small chunks is just like this. Just do a load of length down it like that. Boom. I was actually speaking to someone the other day and she was saying that uh, she doesn't like like how long it takes chopping stuff. And I actually really love chopping like this. <laughs> It's actually kind of relaxing for me. Here we're just gonna slice them again. Cool, now I've got a load of little chunks of celery ready to go. And actually, I'm gonna start putting the heat on our pan. Do do do. Um, about a tablespoon or so, maybe about, maybe a couple of tablespoons. I like it, With plenty of olive oil. So yeah, we'll just let that warm up while we're chopping the other bits. So next up is carrots, let's get those ends off. Quarter them like this, and then we can just do them into little chunks. Because you don't want anything too big in the lasagna really, just these little little bits like this sort of size are perfect. Mm. And yeah, we can mix up the carrot and celery because they're all going in at the same time. All right, now just got to do the onion. Boom, chop off the ends. Turn it so the root is facing you and then do some slices like this, making sure to go most of the way, but still leaving a little bit of the onion attached. And then do a cut in the middle. About almost going to the end. And we'll do the same on this one. I love the smell of olive oil as it's starting to warm up, but I don't like the onion starting to make me cry. So I'm a little bit conflicted right now. Right. So now that's all done, we just super simple to dice them like this. And then flip them over. Boom, boom, boom. Right, let's mix that through. Yeah, that's only been a couple minutes. But now it's ready for us to stick in the rest of our veg. And we're going to add in a little bit of salt as well, because this will just help the veg sweat a little bit and give it a little bit of internal seasoning. Hmm. Oh, it's starting to smell better now. I didn't used to like celery, but I'm starting to become a fan of it and I really love the smell of it. It's starting to soften up nicely. It's only been in there for maybe about, I mean, five minutes ago I added the onions. 
So we're gonna add in the garlic and mushrooms as well. Oh yeah, the garlic's another thing that smells great as it starts to hit that hot olive oil. All right, so the mushrooms have been there for probably another three or four minutes and you see they're softening up nicely. And now we're gonna add in some soya mints. This was frozen mints, but I've just microwaved it earlier just to warm it up to room temperature. Otherwise it's just gonna cool everything down too much. But you can use lots of other types of plant-based mints, or you could also use something like lentils. They can be a great substitute for mints. And also buckwheat, that's a good one. Now that's mixed in, I'm actually gonna add some other bits. So we're gonna add about a tablespoon or so of balsamic vinegar. and a couple of tablespoons of soya sauce. Now this is obviously not a traditional thing that you would have, but it soaks in so nicely to the soy mints. Otherwise it can get a bit dry. Uh, so it makes the soy mints a little bit softer and it adds a lovely bit of saltiness to it and umami flavor. Honestly, it, it works great. So definitely recommend sticking a bit of soy sauce in. Oh, now that's smelling so good. Awesome, right now, we're gonna add in some chopped tomatoes. Just a tin's worth. And we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of some tomato puree. A couple generous ones, there you go. Let's also do a couple of teaspoons worth of oregano or some other mixed herbs works nicely. Now we're actually going to add in just a little bit of water because we're going to leave it to reduce and we want to make sure that the sauce still stays fairly wet. So that was about a cup, uh, sorry about half a cup of water and I found that works out as a good amount. Now let's just try a bit to see any extra seasonings we need to add. So yeah, obviously pepper, haven't added any of that yet. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit now. And some more salt. Again, with salt and pepper, just do it to taste really. So we've got it on a low heat now. Just gonna cover it. And now it's time to make our bechamel sauce. So for our bechamel, we're gonna need a quarter cup of vegan butter. Let's see. It's a, a generous quarter cup. Maybe we'll put a bit back. There we go. And let's just warm this up. So yeah, we want to just let this melt first off. All right, the butter's nicely melted and turn it down a little bit and add in another quarter cup and this time of flour and yeah put in a bit of extra butter so extra flour to even it out and just grab yourself a whisk and get it all nicely incorporated so that's the base of the bechamel all sorted and you're going to grab some soy milk and put in oops, one, two cups. And some people add the milk gradually, but I found it's actually just a lot quicker to add it in all together, give it a good stir to get it mixed in, and then you can just leave it until it starts to get hotter. All right, so that's all mixed. And now we can just grab a grab a spoon and we'll just mix it from time to time to make sure that it doesn't get too stuck onto the bottom. So now you can see it's starting to thicken up a bit more the sauce. It's still not quite boiling yet. So just keep on giving it a little bit of stir in here and there. All right, you can see it's starting to bubble now. So I think it's time to add in our flavorings for it. So we're, well, let's start with the essentials. So usually it'd be like about half a teaspoon or so of salt. And 
about the same of black pepper. I love pepper, so I add quite a lot. And then optional things, which I like to add just to make it really nice and cheesy. We've got some, just some vegan grated cheese. So we'll add about half a cup of that. Nice. And this is pretty much the, the same bechamel recipe that I saw on avant-garde vegan and I used it and it, it's really nice. So shout out to that, that channel. Uh, so, and then about a tablespoon or so of Engevita, which always adds a nice cheesiness to whatever you put it in. And then we we'll just give this a little mix in and it's melty cheese, so it should all dissolve into the sauce. Oh, that smells so good. Bechamel really seems like something that shouldn't be vegan, <laughs> but it is, at least when you make it like this. There we go, it's all mixed in. Look at that. Oh, looks so good. Right, we can turn off the heat on these and turn on the heat in the oven to about uh, 170 and just start to preheat it. And now it's the fun part where we start assembling our lasagna. So yeah, you can still see it's quite, quite moist, but that's what we want so that the pasta properly cooks. Start off with a nice layer of our ragu. Now we're gonna do bechamel. Just layer that over. She lets, one sec. Let's do a little lighting adjustment. Okay, now you should be able to see it a little bit more nicely. We don't wanna to use too much because we want a nice thick layer of the bechamel on top. So grab a couple sheets and We'll need to break one off as well, so pop this in. There. And just to get value for money, let's stick another slice down there. And I like to push it down just to kind of level it out, make sure that the lasagna is all in contact with the lovely sauce. And speaking of lovely sauce, next level. It would be nice actually to have a deeper, a deeper tray for the lasagna to do like a load of layers, but this will do. Okay. So more sheets down and use this extra one as well. And again, squish it, make it nice and flat onto there. We might have a little bit too much. I remember last time I made it, it was like right up to the <laughs> very top. So I'm just gonna do a very thin layer of the sauce just so that it comes through a little bit. So yeah, I'm just gonna have some of this sauce while I'm waiting because I'm quite hungry. And we're just gonna put a load of bechamel on this final layer. Oh, I'm excited for this. I know how good this is gonna taste. So let's spread this nicely up to the edges. Make sure that everything's all covered. Right, here is another great tip that is to stick some tin foil over the top. And what this does is it helps keep in a lot of the moisture so the pasta really properly cooks. And then halfway through, we're gonna take it off and we get it nice and crispy on the top. Stick this in. Oh. Didn't realize there was this tray in there already. Hmm. It all smells like baked potatoes in the oven. Right, so we'll stick the lasagna in the top shelf, stick it to the back so it gets nice and hot, and boom, we'll set a timer for 20 minutes. Let's have a look. Oh, it smells so good already. Let's see underneath the foil. Nice. Cool, it's a good start. I'm gonna pop it back in, let all of this evaporate and get crispy. Oh, all right, so back in. Let's do another oh, 25 minutes, I think. Um, but you can always adjust it a bit. Between 20 and 30 minutes should be, should be good to crisp it all up. Oh, so ready for this. Let's have a look. Oh. 
Oh, it smells so good. Yes. That's what we want to see. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. If you want to get this recipe or any of my other recipes, I've got a link to my mobile cookbook down in the description. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.